Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Makalesi, and today I decided to do something a little bit different. I had a couple of people ask me, you know, since I did a video about the difference between Lucifer and Satan, um, they kind of asked me what my thoughts were about um, Jesus Christ. And I thought it was only fair that I actually do a video because I know if I did one representation, it's only fair for me to do the opposite. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys, I kind of did not want to do this video because I know it's very controversial and a lot of people are very I'm passionate about the subject. So let me just tell everyone, like, you know, when I give you these videos, you don't have to necessarily believe everything I have to say. You, I give it up to you guys to use your own intuition, your own discretion to accept or not accept or believe it. We all are individuals. We all have the freedom to accept what we want to accept. So this is what I'm going to go ahead and tell you my theory and my story and my understanding of it. And if you like it, go ahead and, you know, ask questions. If not, that's fine. You know, this is just... Um, my opinion or, or my thoughts on the topic. So basically, um, <clears throat> to talk about Jesus, okay, Jesus Christ. When people think about Jesus Christ, um, it's kind of a hybrid character because Jesus Christ is, yes, there is a lot of it based on reality and on different types of avatars. However, he is also connected to a real person named Yahshua. Now, a lot of people get Yahshua confused because he is an avatar who actually was incarnated many times in different cycles. And if you're not familiar with the word avatar, what that basically means, it means basically a very potential person who comes in on different cycles and incarnations and comes in for a purpose, usually a spiritual purpose. So um, Jesus Christ is a combination of, like, say, Horus, Rama, Buddha, Tasmu, um, from Sumerian texts, it's just a combination of different characters and mythology put into one person who is known as usually the Messiah through different ages. Now just like regular people, we have our cycles, our incarnation, our past lives. Well, the Christ consciousness, like I would like to call it, also had comes in cycles as well. And the Christ consciousness, I would like to say, is like a little bit a combination between the Luciferian energy combined with the Michael slash the Houthi energy. Now the Michael the Houthi energy, just to do a quick overview, is more like um, logic and intellect, while the Luciferian is more like intu intuitive. So it's kind of like a balance of energy that comes together and basically comes into um, a society where there's a, it's a very imperial society and tries to come in and shift the consciousness to make it a little bit better, make it a little bit better, trying to um, help the evolution of the, of the society kind of go into its next stage. Now the reason why the Christ consciousness likes to go into a very imperial place because it wants to go into a place that's very um, just very uh, motivative, mo very influential so to speak. So, you know, before I go into story, I have to go ahead and tell you about, you know, basically as different ages go by, um, it gets more material. So what happens is, you know, at the first one stage, maybe very high, the frequency might be high, it may be easier for the gods to come and go incarnate. But as time goes, it gets a lot more denser. And when it gets a lot more denser, it gets a lot more material. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because when time or ages go by and it gets more, you know, dense, Usually gods don't like to come back because what happens is the denser the material realm is, the ages are, the realm is, it's harder to retain your consciousness or your, or your memories from a past life. So, you know, the first incarnation of this Christ consciousness, I will just say that, was in Kemet. Now, Kemet is, is also known as Egypt, and it was known as the god Horus. Um, at, that, at that time, what happened with Kemet or Egypt, um, it started descending, it started getting a little bit more material. So Horus came in as a Christ consciousness and tried to help with what was going on with the energy there, tried to jump start it to the next to the next thing. However, it was so declined so fast that Horus or you know, he's a very powerful avatar, yes, however, his mission to jump start it to the next um, spiritual age really didn't help or didn't really work, but he was able to, however, maintain the frequency and maintain the energy. So then that happened. But what happened was, the uh, ne next thing that happened, it, the currents moved to India. When I meant currents, it means like a spiritual current of the Christ consciousness. So when it went into India, um, it, the Christ consciousness got more incarnated into what was called, you know, you had the god named Rama. 
and from Rama and went to Krishna. And that happened, however, the Brahma castle came in, they became a very powerful avatar, just like Horus, everyone knows Rama, everyone knows Krishna, everyone knows Horus. However, the mission of raising a consciousness and start jump-starting it to the next age really didn't really happen as well. So although there were very powerful spiritual teachers, um, the Christ consciousness didn't really fulfill his plan like he wanted to. Now remember, as this was happening, the the realms were getting a lot more denser and more material and it was the age was getting more physical so at the same time why India didn't work is because he was losing his his currents from Horus and he needed that element to go ahead and continue the next stage so with losing his consciousness in India and not having the currents from a Horus because it wasn't able to get transferred he was kind of losing his ability to jumpstart what he wanted to do and then he, the currents went to the Orient. In the Orient, he got reincarnated as Buddha. And Buddha, at that time, they weren't really into women. He really wanted to go ahead and create something. Of course, the same thing he wanted to do with Rama and Krishna. Became a very powerful avatar and powerful god. However, as Buddha, same thing. His philosophy became more intellectual. It didn't really um, have the, the energy aspect that he needed to have. So as Buddha, it was more, more about morals, more about intellectuals, more about philosophy. But it wasn't really the energy wasn't there. Um, and then he went down from Horus to Rama to Krishna to Buddha to Yashua, which everyone's more more familiar with. And that's and that's when at that point the energy or the frequency was so dense that the gods would not even come down. They said, "Forget it. It's too dense. I don't lose my consciousness. I'm not coming down." So Yashua came down, he incarnated, but this time, different from the rest of his times, he decided to travel. So he traveled to Tibet, he traveled to India, to Persia, to Iraq, to you know, Kemet, to Egypt, everywhere. And when he traveled, he was able to learn a lot of different sciences and spiritual philosophies. So when he went to Kemet, he basically learned a lot about the water magic, and he learned about from the water magis. And with the water magic and the water magis, he learned that with the element of water, you can tap into dark energy and love. And through there, you know, he was able to understand water magic and love and dark energy. And then also he went to India and learned from the Sadas and met up with Baba Jai. And from there, he learned how to work with energy, and he also learned how to, you know, connect with the tantric energies and tantric spirituality and you know, he went into different places to, um, Tibet and fused all these different spiritual practices into one and then what he decided to do is he wanted to go ahead and implement the science where it was focused on love on the frequency of love and with that frequency of love he was able to go ahead and wanted to share it to the public because up until that po moment everyone was more concentrated in bloodlines where you had to marry into a certain type of bloodline and the power would be trans transformed genetically where instead he wanted to go ahead and concentrate on the element of love so anyone can access it now he got the science down, however, the people were so material, they weren't able to accept it as he wanted it to. So yes, he was very advanced, however, the, his environment wasn't able to embrace the teachings because it was a little bit too, you know, too, too ahead of their time. So that happened. And then now you have it today. What, what's going to happen today? Well, America, as you guys know it, is the imperial city. And we're at the age again where the Christ consciousness is coming back. And this time he's coming back, though, he's going to come back a little bit more powerful because he's going to come back more so with four horsemen. And with those horsemen, it, he'll come back a lot more prepared. And the thing that's going to be different this time, where before he had to individually travel, um, now everything's globalized. So you, if you affect one little continent, you can affect all of them simultaneously because everything's kind of interconnected. Um, the Buddhas will, you know, know him from Buddha, so they say the return of the Buddha. The Christians will say Christ because they say the return of Christ. Where, you know, the Hindu, they say the return of the Kalkia and the Four Horsemen. So basically, that's my quick introduction, who he is. It's a, it's a type of frequency of energy, you know, people say Jesus Christ, which is a hybrid of mythology and reality, basically concentrated more on Yahshua. Uh, who has an incarnation, comes in here for a purpose of transforming and, tr and changing the consciousness, changing the frequency, changing and making things shift into the next degree. 
originally as Horus, from Horus the occurrence went to India, became Rama and Krishna, from there he was missing the Kemet frequency, went to the Orient, it was more intellectual morale, went to Yeshua, he was able to restart that frequency because he went to Kemet and learned from them and understand all of the different science, was able to fuse all the spirituality together, come up with the, book with the new philosophy of love to erase the bullet lines and although they weren't prepared. So now we're trying to, he's probably going to come over one more time. He's going to come and try to do it all over again with some help. So that is my quick introduction to uh, the Christ and I hope that makes sense and you know, like I said, this is just my understanding of it, of what I believe, and I will let you go ahead and see you in my next video.